right, welcome. Glad you uh, have joined me today. Um, I'm excited to share a method that I call Projectopia. Uh, for those of you who've done things like um, story mapping or customer journey mapping, uh, you may be familiar with some tenants that you see in here, but there's going to be a, a little bit of a different focus, and uh, it might actually resonate with the talk from earlier. So before we get going, I know you, you can exercise your two-foot rule, right? You can leave at any time, but I encourage you not to, because I'm going to not only give you a good talk, I'm going to give you some uh, access to some cool uh, additional tools and uh, things that you can learn from, hopefully that will help you whether it's in your daily job, whether you've got a little side hustle, a home project, or whatever, uh, these are all things you can apply. And I'm, I'm a student of things that make my life more efficient. And so you'll see that in here, and you'll see that in the talk today. So definitely stick around. Uh, you'll hear more. So what are we going to do today? We're going to learn how to visualize projects. That's an important thing, right? Projects are big. They can be scary, overwhelming, too long, whatever. We need to be able to visualize it. Then we need to break it down to pieces. And then the piece that I was just mentioning, which is the most crucial thing, if you leave with nothing else today, it's ditching the dead weight. Okay, we're going to talk about how to have an opinion, how to have a thought process around taking out of your projects what doesn't need to be there. And that is probably the number one thing. Uh, I've consulted with hundreds of startups, with uh, Fortune 50 companies, Fortune 100, 500. Uh, I see this over and over and over and over again. And you'll, you know, if you're honest with yourselves, you'll probably nod and go, yeah, we leave too much stuff in the project. Um, so hopefully today you'll leave understanding how to do that. I've also interviewed a lot of top business leaders, product managers, not as many agile people, um, but uh, folks out in the industry. And what I've found is that they all do this same thing, just most of them do it sort of intuitively. They've figured out how to cut out the stuff that doesn't need to be in there, and that's what's made them really, really successful. So how many of you have some kind of project you're working on at work, at home, whatever? Anyone? OK, most, most everyone. <laughs> awesome. And really, anything's a project, right? It could be restoring an old car. It could be remodeling the bathroom. Uh, it could be launching that new big digital platform with all the marketing things and stuff, right? It, it could be almost anything. And if you think about uh, life in that way, then you can think about taking this method and applying it to your life. And, and the biggest thing with projects is that almost anything can cause them to go wrong, right? We just heard that from Allison this morning. Uh, once you plan, then you go out into the real world and the situation and circumstances change, and how are you going to adapt and adjust to that? And that's really the crucial thing when you think about projects. So a quick moment, who am I? Why should you care? Um, so I've been doing this for a minute. Uh, I've been in the industry for two decades. I've run three of my own startups. Uh, I have worked at, sold to, or consulted for uh, some of these companies. I'm currently at the Home Depot. So, uh, so I've been around. I've been at like really small to really big companies. And again, this process works. The last two companies I've been at in a row, we've driven growth at 100% compound annual growth rate consistently. Um, that's hard. It's really painful, too, with that much hiring and growth and everything else. Um, but it's because I'm using this method, and a lot of that uh, has paid off. I've also been written up in a bunch of places, and you can find that on my website, which is at the bottom. Um, so before we get started, we talk about kind of the agile side of projects and project management. There's a few things I want to hit. There's two kinds of darkness when it comes to projects. There's the darkness of I'm innovating, right? I'm way out ahead of what anyone else can see, right? I see something, and I'm out here, but they can't see me because I'm so far out in the dark. And so I'm going like, come this way, come this way, right? And they, they got to trust and start coming towards me, right? I have a vision. I'm out in front. Uh, that's one kind of darkness, and it's scary in its own right. Um, no, you can't look around. You can't follow the people. And then there's this other darkness. Most of us... Uh, have or are experiencing <laughs> this kind of darkness. Someone has given you a project that is daunting, overwhelming, p potentially outside your skill set. But of course, no one wants to be like, yeah, I don't know how to do that, right? <laughs> your boss gives you a project, you're going to try to take it on, right? So now you're out like treading water in the dark, um, wishing you could call for help, but just like, ah, oh, crap, I hope I can do this, hope it's all going to work out, right? 
So there are two kinds of darkness when you think about projects. I think those are the two spectrums. Um, hopefully we can bring us more into the middle and towards that innovation side, like where we're driving and being leaders over on that side. Uh, and that brings me to the next point. Agile is not leadership, right? If you want to think about a simple analogy, Agile is like the bumpers they put up at the bowling lane, right? It gives you guidelines, but there's freedom on how you send the ball. You don't have to send the ball, right? <laughs> In fact, you can just hold the bowling ball, not bowl. Uh, leadership is about deciding and strategizing about the best way to get the ball down the lane and knock down the pins, right? Deciding that there is a game, the game can be won, uh, and we're going to take action on that game. So make sure when you think about Agile, Agile, again, is a framework. It's a really valuable, powerful framework. Um, but it's the leadership that you guys exercise in the midst of that that creates the projects, that gets things done, that brings people along. Uh, so that's really important, and it's important in this process. Uh, again, I mentioned earlier, everything's a project, right? You can break this down to the small little things. You can take it uh, all the way up to the biggest projects possible. Um, whether those are multi-year, um, multi-month, multi-week, or just something you're doing today. And then the final thing is you get what you don't put in, and that's a reminder that uh, it's all about cutting away from projects. We get excited, we get passionate, we get hooked on this idea or a project, and so we want all the things, or we want it to do all the things someone else's project does already, right? Um, so we get caught in this trap, and that is a very, very dangerous place. So again, watch for the moments during the, this method of how you can take away, because the thing you get is better when you have less clutter, less stuff going on. Did you have an actual question? I, I did. Okay. All right. How do you differentiate between a product and a project? What do you do? I don't. So if you're building a product, it's a project, right? There, there is a bunch of stuff has to occur, has to begin, go through stages and be released, right? So I usually just, I stick with project, and I am a product manager, so, um, so I, I get there's some like weird crossover there. Um, but the idea of a project is the same as a product in that how quick can you get to the point of shipping, right? And nothing's done until you've shipped. Well, you may not be shipping your kitchen, if that's what you're thinking of <laughs> using this for in your remodel, but same idea. When can you cook in the kitchen? When can you? So there's a beginning and an end to a project. Um, there may be continuous new starts to new projects all in the same product, and that's why I don't talk about product as a thing, because typically products evolve over time, and we add to them, and we change them, and we, we sunset features, and we change them, right? But each of those steps is a project, so I would definitely think of it that way. All right, now we get into the meat of it. Uh, and just so you know, I'm gonna go through this and then I'm gonna ask for some of your projects and we're gonna do one live uh, to see if we can actually apply what we've learned here. So hope my goal is that you can walk out this door and apply this to your own project right away, okay? So that's, that's my hope for you for today. Um, unpack the suitcase. Why, why do we start here? So I'm gonna assume everyone's at least used a website. Probably a lot of you have built one or contributed to one, written on a WordPress site, done something that relates to a website. And that's why I'm going to use this analogy, because it's fairly relatable. Even if you haven't done those things, you've used one, so you can kind of imagine what it might take to get that thing out there. So I want to build a website, and I got all these ideas about things that make up a website, right? Well, right there, that's the problem, right? That's, someone just gave you a project. Make website. And then we dream up all the things that they just, they thought when they told us that, but we thought new things, and suddenly there's all these things, right? There's all these things that we have to build this website. Um, so you have to unpack the suitcase. You gotta like pause, don't get into action mode, think about the different things. There's, you know, homepage, a blog, there's SEO. Like what kind of site is it? Are you gonna sell products? Is it informational? Uh, are you trying to get email signups? Right, there's a lot of reasons to have a website. and so. You gotta be thoughtful about, all right, what are these pieces? Um, so these are just some, okay? I just threw some ideas out there, here's some ideas. We've unpacked the suitcase. We at least now know, before we go running off with, with that loaded suitcase, what's in there, what we think might be included in there. All right, so that's pretty easy. We unpacked it, we thought of the big things. Now we're gonna organize those things. So we have these things, and we're gonna lay them out in a semi-linear order. Not all things work linearly, um, but it's sometimes it's good to visualize and just sort of get them out. I don't have room here. I didn't want to just like make them tiny, but you know, take a wall, 
<laughs> and put a bunch of post-its out there. But visualize all the things that you think go from, I didn't have a website, to I have a website that I'm imagining that does the things, right? So obviously I can't have uh, SEO before I even have a domain, somewhere for them to type in a URL, nike.com, and go there, right? So I've laid these out, and these are kind of semi in order, right? I gotta have a domain, then I have to have somewhere to host that domain, then I need a homepage, uh, right? You sort of build out this website concept. And you don't have to be uh, super exact, you want the big things, right? Big categories, go along, and again, this is that like, I'm, I'm okay, I'm unpacking the suitcase and organizing it. We're still not taking the trip. Right? So don't panic at this stage. It's a really good stage to have teammates contributing their thoughts. Right? So now you know what other people think of when they say website. So you're gathering these big things. You're laying them all out. Now you kind of go, OK, ah, that's a lot of big categories. Right? This could take a long time. Just writing a blog could take a long time. How, how many blog posts do we need? What equals done? Right? When do we make that live? So now we realize step three, crap. We have packed too much, <laughs> right? Um, this is a common problem. In fact, I literally just saw this, September 5th. This killed me because it's so true, right? You guys have packed for trips. This happens all the time. It's like, I don't wear the same shirt all week, then I go on vacation, and I need 32 shirts, <laughs> right? You're trying to fit all this stuff, and it's like, you're on vacation. You could wear the same shirt all week. It wouldn't matter, right? But we get caught up in like, well, what's the weather going to be like? What if I want to go out? What if I want to go to the beach in the morning and then go out? And then, you know, like we, we get so caught up, right? But isn't this every project, right? If you sit back and you think about it, we, this is what we want to do, right? Because we're in dream phase with a project. It hasn't started. I could pack all the things into this dream, right? There's no risk in that. Just dreaming. I'm just putting them out there. Well, once they're out there, what ends up happening? We start building all of it, right? It's like over and over. We just start building it. So, I took a first pass at this, right? And again, this is a great place to have your team involved. And team could be, it could be a small project, it could be your dev team, right? Team could be a bunch of other agile, you know, scrum masters or agile folks around you because you're thinking about how you want to take a project of shifting teams into uh, safe or into uh, scrum or into whatever. Like, that's a project, right? Your team could be stakeholders. Could be lots of people who want to speak into this, right? Really, really important time right here. Why? It's because of this pile we're going to create. You can call it a parking lot, you can call it a dumping ground, whatever you want to call it. But the pile exists for a really, really important reason. Let me think about what that reason might be. So an important reason is that I have seen and heard your thought or your idea. We have discussed it. And we have concluded that it is not in version one, right? That's what most people freak out about when we ship products. I thought that was going to have what, right? I thought it was going to do, oh, you didn't say you thought it was going to do that. Yeah, but you should have known, <laughs> right? So they're involved at this stage. They see that a website has many things. They've thrown in some of these ideas, and now as a group, you've kind of taken them out and said, these are all good ideas. Like, an about page is kind of important on most sites, right? Like, you should tell why the heck you exist on the web. So I'm not saying that we're not building an about page. I'm saying that before we go live and turn the switch on on this website, we don't have to have an about page, right? So again, you still might go, yeah, but about page is important. This should, no, stop, pull back, right? Remember we talked about, <laughs> where we pack too much, right? The longer you stay in the mode of I've packed too much, the better. It's uncomfortable, it's hard, stay there. Keep pulling stuff out. Pull stuff out, be like, I don't need a domain. And make someone go, well, yeah, we kind of do need a domain. All right, we'll put it back in, right? Push on people's tendency to want to keep it all in and just like cut more, cut more. So someone's like, you can't have a website if you don't have a host. Okay, cool, we'll put that back in. Right? This is a really, really important, valuable step. So in my mind, you need a, something to type in. Right? You need a nike.com. You need somewhere that hosts that domain and where you're going to put content. So then you're going to have a home page or so something they get to. And I'm going to say, in this case, this was a, uh, I'm trying to grow an email list was the purpose of my website. So I want one element 
that is focused on that purpose, right? So I can capture people's emails if they want to sign up for my newsletter, whatever. I could even cut that, right? But we're going we're gonna to leave that in for now. So, all right, we've cut a bunch of stuff. We've made this parking lot pile. People have talked about it. They've fretted. They've worried that maybe it's not going to be complete enough. It's OK, right? Because now we know at least where we're going to ship this first version. We still have those ideas. We know that we want to address them, but we're going to address them in phases, right? We're going to make this approachable. And this, again, is where projects become less stressful. I now have four big categories. I can now take the same team or maybe a smaller team that's going to build the website and figure out what are the steps it takes. Now, this is where you're getting specific, right? What are the steps it takes to actually create that big top level thing? Um, I listed some on here, and you're going to get this. Uh, you can get this whole presentation, so you'll see these if, if you're building a website. Use it, right? You can check out what I, <laughs> what I use for mine. So um, I'm not, I don't get sponsored or anything, just telling you some of these are really nice and cheap and easy. But the idea that like, even when you spread this all the way out, like, it's kind of ridiculous to say, all right, I'm going to like, sign up with a host, and I'm going to save access information, and then I'm going to deploy where, OK, those are, they seem obvious, but write them out. Write out the little details, right? Because what if you're not the one doing that work? So get it all laid out so you know what it is. Pro tip, secret pro tip is not on the screen. Cut some of these too, <laughs> right? Do it again. You pack too much. It doesn't take all that to deliver this stuff, right? So you can do this over and over, even along the way. Like, don't, don't ever hesitate to call me and be like, I still think there's too much stuff. Put it up there and be like, couldn't we cut this, this, and this? I'm, I literally had the meeting yesterday. We're working on a tiny little pilot project, and we're still cutting stuff along the way. And we cut the tar out of that thing. It was like 40 sticky notes, and we're building five of them, and we're still cutting stuff. So don't be afraid to keep doing this, right? Could I ship sooner? Could I get it out in the world faster? That's a really important question to keep asking. So we got all these uh, elements, right? So now I'm going to create a plan. Before, right, when it was build website, I had no plan. I had no idea when I was going to ship it. I didn't know when it was going to be done. I didn't know if I was going to meet everyone's you know, criteria, the satisfaction, anything else. Now we know there's four things. There's a list of steps to get there, and I can plan, right? Agile folks. We live this right every two weeks or however often <laughs> your guys' team cycle, right? Estimation, oh, it's scary. Well, not really, right? We broke it down so granular. It's like, all right, that getting a domain, I give someone two hours, right? You're going to figure out if it's available. We've got some choices. Maybe we had a separate meeting to come up with what our name should be for the domain. Uh, and they're going to go see if they're available and alternates. Web host, do a little, I gave eight hours, right? A day. So I'm going to research some providers, get some estimates, figure it out. Maybe I'm going to sign up, log that information, because multiple people have to log in or whatever. Home page, three days. Again, this is a very lightweight home page. Uh, there could be whole committees <laughs> around what's on a home page. We'll think personal home page. You're building your own site. You need some graphics. You need some stuff, right? So let's say I asked to made mine at three. And then two days to figure out the email capture. Sign up for MailChimp. Plug that in, how does that work, test it. So even if it was just me, I've broken down website, which seemed big and daunting, into something I could do personally in about a week. And if I broke these up with other teammates, I could possibly have this done in maximum three days, right? Maybe even shorter than that. So what's better, generic build website? or 21 discrete, knowable tasks that people could literally check off and complete and turn a website live? I hope you're going to answer the 21 tasks. But uh, <laughs> that's, the, that's the basic concept, right? So under a week, way less stressful. Everybody's in bo on board. They bought in that like these are the right things to get live first. And then we're going to have a new meeting that's going to talk about what phase two is, right? Is it products? Is it the blog? Is it the about page? OK. But these are all small, contained projects, kind of like Allison talked about, right? Get to the next rock. And then now I've made it there. Get to the next ice boulder, whatever. That's same methodology right here, is just stop looking at the peak and start shipping each iteration along the way. The conversations are way more sane, right? Have sane conversations with your teams. Um, 
It's way less daunting, less stressful, a lot easier to estimate. It's hard to estimate a 10-month project, right? Everyone's pulling that out of their, you know, that's all made up. And you, you know it's wrong the moment you say the date, right? You know, and it's like, why do we do that? Like, you know it's wrong, so don't. Don't say it. See, like, this is so big, I can't tell you. It's probably at least 10 months. So that tells me, as a leader, I need to break this down further so that I can start giving you some close up estimates and then some far out swags of like, yeah, if you, if you did want to build that pile over on the right, it might take you this amount of time. But I could tell you pretty closely how long it will take you to get the first pieces out to market, right? Guess what you just did? You sounded smarter than like 99.9% .9 of all employees to any given boss, manager, executive, right? Because they know you're making it up when you tell them 10 months, and they know they've made it up when they tell you they want it in 10 months, <laughs> right? Actually, they'll tell you they want it in eight. So it's better that you have a plan that they can actually go, hey, this makes sense. I can see pieces. I can see how you've estimated it, right? Super, super important. So how hard is this to use? Well, here's five free tools you could use to do your own project plan, your own projectopia. Use sticky notes. Take a dry erase marker and write on a window. Use Excel tabs, do Google Sheets, right? There's no tool preventing you from doing this. So start doing it. Even if it's not your role, start thinking about the things you're working on this term, because you can ask good questions about the person who's not doing it, right? So you can say, it seems like website's too big. I've drawn out some ideas, and they're going to go, thank you, thank you, right? So there's a lot of free ways to do it. I give this talk in different places. Um, I actually created a Trello version uh, of what I do to promote, prepare, and deliver this talk. Totally free. So it'll be in the document, so you can click on it. Um, you can write it down as well, but uh, go check it out. It's public, you can see it, I've made my own, so it's just, again, it can be applied to almost anything. Uh, but the point is, just do it. Start doing it, start trying it out. That's the really valuable part. So, you're on your way. Showed you a very simple five-step system. Uh, it's not hard. The hard part is having that ability to make decisions, right? To say, like, I'm going to cut things. There's too much. Uh, and, and cut, again, means push off. You know how many times, I'll let you guys guess on this one, real guesses. How many times I've cut a lot out of a product where there was like really vocal sales stakeholders, you know, CTOs, stakeholders, you know, like all these different people. We've cut it down to like a three sprint project where it was gonna be some 10 month thing. Um, how many times we've actually gone back and built more of what we had previously laid out in that pile. Anyone have a guess? I got zero, zero. Correct answer, zero. 20 years I've been doing this. <laughs> Once you have something that works, people are like, oh, it works. What are we gonna do next? Nobody, like, it's very rare, right? Unless, again, you knew, like, purposefully that, okay, we're gonna come back and add product selling to our website. Okay, that was a phase two. But in terms of the fluff that you cut out, all the extra ideas and the good ideas, almost never, right? You solve a problem, it works, they want you to move on to the next thing, right? So don't get caught up struggling through building all the stuff you shouldn't have built when, uh, when you can actually bypass it, right? So like I mentioned, I've mentored a lot of folks. I've done this many, many times. I've seen some really big shifts in whole companies uh, by cutting away all the extra fluff, focusing in on the right things and getting them out to market.